Well, hello guys, it's Sendo here again. So, today I'm actually going to be talking about um, something that's been on my mind for a long time with this game. And I've been meaning to make this video for a long time now, so now I'm finally going to do it. <coughs> and the uh, talking point here is how many maps we have in Competitive Splatoon that are played. So, in case you don't know, in Competitive Splatoon we play... Um, Four modes basically on all maps, all the possible map combinations in the game. So currently that's 60 maps in total. And as I specified this is for West only, then uh, Japan has a bit of their own thing which I will be talking about soon. But uh, in the 60 maps now with Mall, that's gonna be 64 maps. Every new map adds kinda like four maps because we have Raymaker, Splatzones, DC and Clamplets. And the uh, mall won't be the last map. I'm thinking they're gonna do like 20 maps maybe. That would be 80 maps total. So that's 80 maps in total we are playing in tournaments. Like you join a tournament and uh, you don't really know what to expect. Like you expect to play any of, of the 80 maps. Like that's gonna be the situation we're gonna be heading in. And personally I don't know any of competitive games that are like this amount of maps that are being played competitively like equally like we're doing uh, Western Splatoon community. And uh, personally I don't uh, think this is a good thing. So there's like, there's like a couple points to this why this is not really uh, you know working in my opinion. So first would be that it overly centralizes the meta. So uh, just think about it, like if you have 80 maps, you're m more likely to be choosing a strat that's good for, kind of like good for every map. Like, you know, for example, Zap is very popular, Zap is good for everything. Probably Blaster is gonna be like, for TC it works, for Raymaker it works, so you know, just choose Zap, choose Blaster, I guess Rapid now. This is good for everything, then plus one is something like, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe like Trislocer for example or something. So just you're more likely to choose weapons that are good for every map instead of kind of like uh, trying to find uh, the best way to play a certain map. So like yeah, inversely, it doesn't really allow you to you know focus creating specific strats for certain maps. So let's think about I'm like a team that's wow we have an idea for this map. Let's like really practice and let's really scream it out. Let's really make a strat that's good for this map. Let's have like doubles for like the beacons, like some next level stuff right here. Like I don't even know, like it could be anything. So they scream and they come up with the strat for this map. And well, guess what? It's still only gonna be up here in the tournaments one out of 80 times. So you can, it's not worth it to spend much time in one map. That's why I always thought that the style of scream some teams do in West, where they scream one map in a row like many times, it's not very efficient. Just because there's so many maps for us to learn, so if you spend a lot of time on just one map, it's not gonna be like, it's not really gonna pay out for you. Another thing is that, okay, they have to make four versions of every map, so every map they make, they have to make four versions of them. So. What this basically means is that not all of them are going to be very balanced, like... Well, just example, here we have a Starfish and Port in Rotation. Well, you can disagree with me on this, this is just my example of a way map could be not really working really well. For, for example, for Port uh, Tava Control, uh, Stingray is very strong, like, by very strong I mean almost broken in certain ways, like you stack Stingray and it's insane. It's really insane trying to make a push after you lose lead once. Starfish main stage, well there's this area like, uh, if you watch my video I did about Raymaker Roots on Starfish main stage. Well there's this area like, uh, just like above the spawn, that's when you get there it's like basically like uh, game over for the defending team just because of how dominant this spot is for the Raymaker. So like it's understandable like, <coughs> sorry about that. So there's not gonna be like uh, a possibility for them to create very good versions of every map since they have to do like four of them. But this would also be something that uh, we could maybe like uh, decide on competitive that hey maybe we shouldn't play these maps then. And indeed like 
Okay, there's gonna be like um, more of a random factor in tournaments. In the sense that you, you're not gonna have enough time to prepare every map, right? Like no one is like, even if you scream like whole day, and you still probably wouldn't have time to practice every map well, like to any meaningful extent. So there's gonna be more of a random factor, which meaning uh, you just look at the map list and either you get lucky with maps that you are, you know, uh, practice that you know or you don't, but like you don't have time to practice every map anyway. So it's more of a luck factor instead of you know uh, I, there's like limited map pool. I practice these maps and then you know I did on my strong maps or or my bad maps, but at least I've like practiced them, I at least know them, they like, wow, I never played this map with my team, uh, well, let's just do something, I guess. And, so as long as I think about this way, like, okay, let's make a screen where I practice every map in the game. So there's 80 maps in the game, like at the end of the things. How long do you think this would take? Because, if you don't take breaks, it would take around 8 hours for you to go through every map combination that's played competitively. Like, 8 hours. And you play them once. Like I don't think if you play a map combination once, you know how to play it. So I don't think this is very sustainable for a competitive community to be doing this. But there are some uh, solutions to this as well. So first one would be how Japanese do, do it. So if you don't know in Japan, they don't really have this option in the private battle. They don't really have this option where you can go right here. They have only this option here. So, this is certainly one way to do it. Uh, good part here is that if you do splat zones only, uh, most of the community already does this, so it's a natural extension to that. And in fact, most of the community does it. Like, we can't forget that Japan is the biggest, is, the bi is way bigger than a Western uh, community or the English speaking community. So, it's a natural extension to that might be able to. We might be able to connect with them better in the forms of making tournaments together and so on. And arguably, and this is more from my personal opinion, I think Splat Zones is currently the most balanced mode in the sense of weapons that are allowed to be played. I think almost like every weapon class currently has like a place in uh, Splat Zones meta. And uh, just to give a like, real life example, like Charger, you don't really see this in West too much. And uh, I, could, I could almost make a whole video of this, like uh, talking about this. But uh, Charger is a very specific kind of weapon that's kind of hard to push with, and that's like the downside of it. Like in the last game, you could play like a turret style sniper with the elite, where you had like a lot of range, and then you stayed back and hit everything that. But in this game, sniper is kind of weaker, so doesn't really add in the same way an option. But in Splat Zones, you don't have to push in very specific ways that you have to push in DC and Raymaker, for example. So, you're currently seeing a lot of Sniper being played for Splat Zones meta. And uh, yeah, this is more of my personal opinion, but I thought I'd still throw it there. But downsides, of course, that this doesn't mean that uh, DC, Raymaker, Clamplets are, aren't worth playing. Like, to me, I think they are. I like playing them. But um, yeah, I still think Splat Zones might be the best mode of them all. Uh, another option would be just to have one mode per map. So this is one idea that I saw on Twitter, I've thought about this before myself. So basically what this would entail is that, okay, we look at the map list and we look at every map and we decide that for every map we decide one mode that we play. So, Reef, let's think about Reef. What is bad for Reef? Raymaker is horrible, it's way too easy to knock out. Uh, the closed push is way too hard to defend, it's not a very balanced map, so let's not do Rainmaker. Then we maybe decide DC isn't also good for some reasons, then Glam Blitz also isn't good for some reasons, so yeah, let's go Splat Zones. So Splat Zones for that, the Muscle Forge, same thing, just look at the maps, okay, we decide, okay, maybe Rainmaker is the best one, so we play Rainmaker, Muscle Forge, Fitness, go Starfish, no Rainmaker, no Splat Zones, well, Glam Blitz sounds good, let's do that. So we evenly spread around the modes like this and in the end we have just 20 maps we play and all the modes are represented but still you have like a smaller map pool like a 4 times smaller map pool and uh, yeah there's also other options third one would be just limiting amount of maps played I think I'm 
I don't really like this so far because I, I think all the maps are pretty good, but essentially how this would work would be like Oh, Moray sucks. Let's just not play Moray at all. Uh, Cylinder of sucks. Let's not play Cylinder of at all. I like this. But to me, like every map in the game is nice to play and I don't think any of them is like fundamentally broken. Like in Splatoon 1 there were some maps you could make like arguments for that had to be removed completely, but this game I don't think it's really uh, good. And the uh, last option, which is probably the kindest, like a uh, less extreme of the <laughs> would be just to have a <clears throat> kind of like a seasonal map pools. So how this would work is that, <clears throat> uh, well, we decide like, okay, <clears throat> for this season, let it be like three months, four months. Okay, we're only playing like this subset of maps in the competition. So we could say like, okay, we play Moray, Rainmaker, Manta Splat Zone, Snapper, Glam Blitz, whatever. Uh, or just, you know, we play Inkblood, we play Port, we play Humback, we play Manta, so on, so on. So you have like certain maps and everyone's practicing those maps for that season. And then most of the big tournaments just use that map list. So, you know, you have like use of practicing those maps. But um, yeah, that's the upside of it is that nothing is gone for like good. Like at the end of every season, we could like see, okay, well, what what worked with the bands and what didn't <clears throat> and I believe Bianas is too <coughs> doing so something like this kind of, so I'm excited to see how that works, but that's just one tournament kind of like what I'm talking here is to implement some kind of like a system that's common for all tournaments not just one tournament, but instead of for all tournaments and I know this is the hard part because you know you have like a DOs necessarily aren't even like talking to each other that much or I don't know if there's like a, some like uh, a Common forum for TOs to talk like I don't know if this is a thing. I think it should be if it's not But yeah, like how this would probably work uh, How this would sub ball would probably start rolling if like endgame say in ink TV like some of these bigger organizers guys who made G7 like these events that are always gonna be gathering like a lot of uh, teams, Squidward tournaments as well, like they would get together and talk, I think that's like probably the ones, one way to get this rolling, but I don't think it's enough that just one tournament does this, because okay, it's cool that BNS does this, and yeah, okay, I think that's a good experiment and all, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's just one tournament, like it's not gonna affect what teams practice, teams are still gonna have to practice 16 maps, like it's cool and all, but BNS isn't like anyone's like primary goal, so they're still gonna be playing, uh, you know, 60 maps in scrims, so that's like the fundamental problem to me, like we're scrimming way too many maps at the same time, like there's no focus, so there can't be any like, you know, specific strats, or there can't be any like, uh, you know, actually like the salt of the competition to me, like, that's like to me, like, oh, we go to port and these guys have some crazy strat you never even dreamt of, and they like roll you with it, and you're like, hey, why did this strat work, and how can we maybe implement it or counter it. And this was to me like very much a thing when I played uh, Splat Zones in Splatoon 1, like, yo, these guys had strats I never even dreamed of, like, invest this was never really a thing because people were opting in for strats that work for everything, not strats for that work very well for just one map. So personally, this just, you know, of course you can disagree and say like, okay, let's just have the variety over like specific strats, but uh, Anyways, this would be my case, and uh, let me know what you think. Personally, I don't know what's the best way to go about it. I know my opinion is that I don't think playing 80 maps all the time is like very sustainable, in a sense. But I'm still very much interested in hearing what people think, what they think should be the way going forward. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, see you next time.